If you have significant number of patients on respiratory medicines, you should be at least aware of the two-tone trainer. You may find it helpful when initially counseling patients new to the inhaler therapy or for the subset of patients struggling to learn or maintain the correct inhalation rate. The second tool we will discuss is the in-check dial. The in-check dial is a handheld inspiratory airflow meter. The in-check dial simulates the resistance encountered when inhaling from a number of different dry powdered inhalers and a metered dose inhaler with or without a holding chamber. The device can assess if a patient can achieve the minimal inspiratory rate needed for a particular device. Therefore, the in-check dial is more versatile than the two-tone trainer, which is limited to meter dose inhalers. The inject dial has three main parts, an inspiratory flow meter, which is in the long cleared tube portion, a rotating dial that sets the airflow resistance for the various devices. There is a place to insert a mouthpiece. A sterilizable mouthpiece is included. One can also purchase disposable mouthpieces. The device also comes with a card showing optimal flow ranges for various devices. I will now demonstrate how to use the inject dial. For the purposes of this demonstration, I will set the dial for the discus. Turn the dial to the picture of the discus. The dial should click into place. Next, reset the device by gently tapping it on your hand until you see and hear the magnet fall. This pushes the red indicator to the bottom. Next, turn it right side up so the magnet falls toward the dial. Attach the disposable mouthpiece. Be sure that the arrow is pointing out. Exhale deeply and create a tight seal with the lips around the mouthpiece. Inhale at the rate you think is desired for the discus device for about two to four seconds. Check the red indicator to see the inhalation rate actually achieved. Ideally, it should be within the optimal rate for the discus device, which is 30 to 90 liters per minute. The range for the different devices is conveniently along the side of the tube, or you can check the card that comes with the device. Record that rate. Repeat all of the steps twice more to ensure that these results can be duplicated. Let's watch this one more time. Turn the dial to the picture of the discus. The dial should click into place. Next, reset the device by gently tapping it on your hand until you see and hear the magnet fall. This pushes the red indicator to the bottom. Next, turn it right side up so the magnet falls toward the dial. Attach the disposable mouthpiece. Be sure that the arrow is pointing out. Exhale deeply and create a tight seal with the lips around the mouthpiece. Inhale at the rate you think is desired for the discus device for about two to four seconds. Check the red indicator to see the inhalation rate actually achieved. Ideally, it should be within the optimal rate for the discus device, which is 30 to 90 liters per minute. The range for the different devices is conveniently along the side of the tube, or you can check the card that comes with the device. Record that rate. Repeat all of the steps twice more to ensure that these results can be duplicated. The rates for the discus Flexhaler or metered dose inhaler are built into the rotating dial. The inhaler is the wavy lines. There are pictures for the discus and flexhaler. There is another type of inhaler pictured, but that one is not available in the United States. For other DPIs, an adapter is needed. Adapters are available for the aerolyzer, hand inhaler, and twist inhaler. The aerolyzer adapter is labeled with an F and has a larger opening, and the handy inhaler adapter is labeled with a HH and has a smaller opening. The twist inhaler adapter is labeled with a THX. In addition, a smaller adapter for pediatric patients can be purchased. To use the in-check dial with the aerolyzer, twist inhaler, or handy inhaler, align the arrow on the mouthpiece with the free flow or wavy lines. Then insert the appropriate adapter. Insert the disposable mouthpiece into the adapter with the arrow pointing outwards. Then, use the same technique as described earlier. Here's an example how this tool could potentially improve a patient's therapy. Look at the table with the range of optimal inspiratory rates for the various devices. Notice that the hand inhaler, meter dose inhaler, and the discus require the lowest minimal inspiratory rates. For example, your formulary includes inhaled corticosteroids in both a discus and twist inhaler. A patient has a very low inspiratory rate with repeated effort. The inhaled corticosteroid in the discus, which requires a lower inspiratory rate, would be the better choice. There are some additional clinical situations where this device may be advantageous. The in-check dial would be most useful in situations where you question if an individual patient can achieve an adequate inspiratory rate to inhale the medicine from a specific device. For example, patients with very severe lung disease 
or FEV1, under 30%. If patients can't achieve the needed inspiratory rate for any of these devices, then nebulizer therapy may be appropriate. Another possible situation would be to objectively assess if a young child is able to transition from a meter dose inhaler to a dry powdered inhaler. Some DPIs are indicated for children as young as four years old, but not all children that young may be able to generate the necessary inspiratory rate to use a DPI. The inject dial could also be used to assist a patient in learning the desired inspiratory rate on a new device. This tool could also be helpful for patients who are using more than one device, each requiring a different inspiratory rate. The patient could compare and contrast the inspiratory rate required for each individual device. The advantage. The inject dial is available from a medical supply store or can be ordered on the internet. It does not require a prescription. It is reusable. It is more versatile than the two-tone trainer as it is useful for multiple devices. However, this device is more expensive than the two-tone trainer. It is reusable, however, but after the initial expenditure for this device, the incremental cost for the disposable mouthpiece is very modest. Depending on your patient population, you may find this device cost-effective. This device only deals with problems related to the inspiratory rate. There are many other technique issues we discussed in other videos in this series. For example, inadequate breath holding, not loading doses correctly, inadequate depth of breath, and so on. So this device does not replace direct observation of a patient's device technique. There are no adapters yet available for some of the newer devices.